Almighty God, you have blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. Help us to use them wisely in the service of our town government. We ask this in thy holy name. Amen. So flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Matt, Judy. <laughs> Um, Matt drove a long ways to be with us this evening. Had a good three hour drive? Uh, three and change. Three and change, yeah. No depends on the weather. Yeah. Uh, we thank you for coming. I will uh, put you on the agenda first. Um, I know you have a long drive home, it'll be late. Uh, we thank you for all your work you have done on this project. Go for it. Sure. Uh, a few things I'd like to distribute here. Um, let's start with this. This is a post-bid package. As you know, we opened bids uh, mid-February for the Boys Road pump station repair. Do you want me to leave a copy for yeah, okay. yes. And what this package is, is a, an overview of the results of the bid and a little bit of information about the low bidder. Um, what rural development requires of us is the uh, cover letter that is the, the first part, and that's just us saying that we have reviewed the contractor's qualifications and we take no exception to the town awarding contract and engaging a contract with the low bidder. Um, after that, you have the bid tabulations, the results, with integrated rigging and contracting out of Plattsburgh as our low bidder. Uh, you can see there's quite a range of bids um, on a project this small. I was actually quite surprised at the range of bids um, and values of those. I, I really don't have a great explanation for that. Some of them just need to work a little bit more than others perhaps. Some of them are a little more efficient at doing a small project than some of the larger companies. You can see the, the higher numbers came from some of the bigger contractors, the ones that carry larger overhead, Luck Brothers, Renane Building, much larger contractors that you know, I would expect to have a larger number on it. What you have after that is the Form E. This is Rural Development's budget tracking tool. Okay, this is, this is the instrument that we update monthly throughout the project to track project costs and this is the form that you use to request funds from Rural Development to pay the expenses of the project. It's broken down into administration, technical services, and construction. For this grant, there was no administrative cost uh, included. Technical services is the engineering, the study, the design, construction phase management, closeout. Construction cost. What I have in here is the bid amount from our low bidder, $81,513 for a total project cost of $97,913. Now up at the top of the page, there's a few blanks there with funding sources. The Rural Development Grant, the RD Grant, is $77,500. So the difference covered by the other source, which is the local share from Town of Champlain, is $20,413. Okay. Um, that would be the budget to award contract as bid. Um, beyond that, there is a little information about the contractor's recent projects, um, their demonstration of being able to meet the contract schedule, and we received a couple references back from them. Um, in such a short time frame, we weren't able to get responses from all the references. So there's only two there, I believe, but they were both strong references. And um, talking with my other partners in the firm, I you know, did discover that Integrated has done work on a project um, administered by our firm previously for the City of Plattsburgh School. Um, and things went smoothly with the contractor on that project. So we take no exception to awarding contract with them. Now you're probably wondering, um, 
what about the numbers? <laughs> you know, the great contractor, how are we going to do this project? It shows a local share of $20,000. What I also have here is what we intend to do immediately after awarding contract. And I've discussed this with USDA Rural Development. Now this is another project budget on the form And what this project represents, or what this project budget represents, is a deduct change order that we would execute immediately after award of contract. Providing also is a draft of that change order that would be executed. And you will see the only difference in the cost on this is the contract amount of contract number one. You can see that that is 64000 If you look at the change order that I have drafted, we have a deduct amount of $17,092 that brings the contractor's bid price of $81,513 down to $64,421. So it brings us back into the original $82,000 project budget. Uh, what was applied for was a $77,500 grant with a $4,500 local share. Now that share is in-kind services, you know, cash out of pocket from the district, um, what have you, for a total of $82,000. So if we do this deduct change order to $64,421, we actually have um, an $1,100 contingency, $1,179, within the original project budget. And if we don't run into any unforeseen problems in construction, you know, the local share will drop from 4500 down to 3400 um, Now you may ask, how can we do this deduct change order? Um, we, had, uh, we had a pump manufacturer um, work with us in preparing the specs and preparing the budget. Um, pump manufacturer that had already been in contact with the town before we got this grant. They had already given the town some budget figures to go ahead and, and do this work um, prior to, to receiving the grant. Um, so we continued to work with that same pump manufacturer to, to complete development of the project, the contract documents. They gave us a budget figure going into design of $41,000. We have that in writing, you have that in writing from them, with a scope of work attached to that. Now between then and, and bid time, they assisted with preparation of the specifications. And in that process, you know, and shame on me for not picking it up, they slipped in a few extra bells and whistles in the spec. So the number they provided contractors was 68000 last minute before bid they sent out another price in the 50s but it still wasn't the 41,000 that they had provided us so we've been working with the low bidder and with the pump manufacturer he's going to use which is not the same that we had talked to previously to try to pull out some of those accessories that are not essential there are some extra certifications um, that are all described in detail in the attachment to the change order. Um, certification of pump test curves. And again, they, you, um, you're not getting anything physical for this. You're not getting anything additional on the pump. It's a certification for a pump curve for a pump that has, as they say here, literally thousands of installations. Um, the extended warranty. You know, these projects all have a one-year um, 
parts and labor warranty on everything. Uh, an eight year warranty that was specified by the manufacturer we worked with in the beginning um, has a $7,000 value that we can pull out of that. Um, the other items are, you know, uh, statically and dynamically balanced impellers. Again, they're balanced <coughs> when the molds and castings are done. Um, doing that again is redundant, again, for, for a pump station that has thousands of installations. Um, and last is the stainless steel uh, control panel that the initial manufacturer had, had included in their specification is a bit redundant because it's actually already enclosed in another enclosure. So removing those, taking out the contractor's profit and overhead on those items comes out to $10,329. <coughs> in addition to that, we had the contractor pull out restoration and the perimeter drain and have town local forces highway department do that um, you know this is there's very little to no uh, soil work ground disturbance excavation going on there everything's inside of the existing wet well so it's just going to be blading it off and throwing some grass seed back on the shoulder of the road essentially is it and we had a small perimeter drain in there which is just some you know some four inch flexible perforated just run to daylight over the ditch just so that you know, runoff from the road doesn't sit there and run into the pump station. It'll help divert that around it and away from it. So these are some things we can do and still have a pump station that meets the needs and still falls within the original scope of the work um, and puts it back within budget. So this would be my recommendation to the town is to first award contract for bid uh, because we can't do any negotiations with a contractor and change orders until we have a signed contract with them. What we would do is we would prepare the contract, we would prepare the change order, and we would send them in, in, uh, together and tell the contractor he has to sign both in order for, any, for, for either of them to be fully executed. And the contractor uh, has been very good to work with. Like I said, this is my first experience with him, but... Uh, um, he's been very forthright with his numbers. He provided me his raw information, his raw cost takeoffs to do this job. Usually contractors don't necessarily let you see that type of information. He's been very forthright with it and, and seems to want to work with us to make this project possible. Of course, I, you know, I kind of leaned on him and said, if we can't, then we've got to throw out all bids. So, um, yeah, I think we have, you know, a, a good contractor available and I think um, awarding contract doing a deduct change order would still, you know, uh, see Is this that project a through. Is practice, Matt, to do that, to award a bid and then have a... Do a deduct change order immediately yeah. afterward? Um, I wouldn't say common. I've done it on other projects where we've ran into similar budget issues. But it's legal to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is. Okay. Yeah. I'm just yeah. concerned. But yeah. I mean, projects see change orders all the time. But usually... Some, they some increase and some yeah. decrease. To this magnitude, I would think it's substantial, seventeen thousand. Um, I mean, as from a percentage of the contract, maybe, but seventeen thousand on other projects is. I mean, I, we've written five hundred thousand oh, dollar change know, orders on yeah. projects. Um, it's not uncommon. What's our What's our time frame on that? If we If we agree to this and send this back and get the change, what are we looking at on, on an overall time frame? Because we're having a terrible time with that thing up there. Yep, and I understand that. Um, Time frame is that when I return to the office tomorrow, we draft the contracts, the final change order, mail to the contractor, he signs it, sends it back, town signs it, and then rural development signs it. Um, all that will probably take two or three weeks just to get correspondence back and forth. Uh, we write, write them a notice to proceed and have a pre-construction conference after rural development has signed the contract. and contractor will order order his pumps then. He said he's got a, probably a six week lead time on getting the pumps in and then as you can see on his schedule performance of the work will all occur probably within a week, week and a half. You add all those up and you're probably still out there two months. Well, we're less off. What's that? It's better where we were last fall. Yeah. And do you feel with these deductions, we're still getting a good, a good product? 
Oh yeah, I mean, we haven't taken anything away from the functional ability of the pump station. Um, and quite honestly, I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't catch catch these when they were slipped into the spec by the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. But you know, they spent sent us a 20-page spec, and you know, one or two little lines here of it. It's going to be a stainless steel panel and things like that. Does it cause you any concern with rural development approving this with a change order? No, I sent them a draft of the change order and um, a copy of the for me that you have in front of you with a revised project budget, and they concurred with, with um, proceeding with these two steps, awarding contract at bid and then doing the deduct change order. Is there any way of speeding this up because of the severity of that area? Um, the pump lead time is the pump lead time. There's probably not much we can do about that. All I can do is make sure... I follow the the trail of that contract day to day to make sure you know someone's either signing it or putting a stamp on the envelope to send it back you know to try to try to compress that first three or four weeks into a week or two mm -hmm. and we'll have a notice to proceed and a pre-construction conference with the contractor just as soon as possible unfortunately real development has the same procedures whether it's a eighty thousand dollar project or an eight million dollar project so they have the same list of paperwork to be completed. I mean, you've been copied on some of the correspondences and you've seen their eight, nine pages at times of things you need to do prior to notice to proceed. Does DEC be involved in this? Do they get involved at all? Um, in this case, uh, they've wanted minimal involvement. They see this more as a repair project, not as a new construction project. Um, so Dominic Fontana signed off on this just because rural development said we're not going to approve it until he, until he does mm -hmm. because when we initially sent this to him he's like I mean he, he really had no intent on making an approval because he saw this just as, as a repair I didn't really inquire his involvement but he has reviewed the drawings and specs and could give his approval beyond this he really will have little to no involvement because there is a certain need that Alan can attest to <laughs> Daily, not get any better words. No. We need to. Uh, we're, we're all feeling it. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting surface water down there now, which of course ruins a gallon of joke. And uh, the sooner the better, as far as we're concerned. Yeah. Uh, then I need a motion to approve the low bidder. Am I correct? You need to have a motion to award contract to integrated rigging and contracting, and I have six copies of the notice of award that need to be um, signed tonight so that I can provide that to the contractor. Should that be with the stipulation of the 17000 reduced? That doesn't have to be included in the notice of award. Okay. But when I send the contracts to the contractor, uh, the change order will accompany that and they will need to sign both. And I don't expect any problems with that. Six signatures. Yep, uh, same thing six times. Um, yeah, get used to it. It's rural development. It's yeah. Federal funding, it's six of everything. There'll be six contracts, six change orders, six notice of awards, six of everything. And we'll get a copy of that as well. Thanks. Actually, you can keep one of those six. Maybe. Okay, I do need a motion then to approve uh, integrated rigging, is it? Yep, integrated rigging and contracting. Uh, for the amount of 81000 81,513. <laughs> Thank you. have seen that number a few times. I'll make a motion to that effect. So having uh, IRS as the low bidder being awarded the contract under project 209074. Okay, I'll second that motion. I right, thank you. Any questions on the contract? Or the process of getting Awarding that bid. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a roll call vote, I think. Uh, John Cooper? Aye. John Tatro? Yes. Steve? Yes. And yes for myself. That's four. Okay. Anything else we need to... Uh... Not as far as this project. Um, you know, I'll do my best to keep this moving as fast as possible and try to get the contractor out there and get his work done. I, I can call the contractor tomorrow and see if he'll... I'll let him know that we have a notice of award and see if he'll go ahead and order the pumps now. If he, if he places that order, that'll 
have that moving concurrently with getting the rest of the process done. Tell him that's really important. I'm sure he understands it if he's looked at the job at all. Yeah. Has he been down here at all? Yeah. She the yeah. I know Alan's sick of attending it, that's for sure. Yeah. And at the completion of the installation, there will be a startup from the manufacturer's rep and training. So if Alan, you want to be the one to be trained, or if there's somebody else, in addition to him, you know, we'll coordinate that schedule when that time comes. But you know, anybody that you want to have their hands on this pump station in the future should be there when that training happens. Thank you, Matt. No, we don't have to with this this draft for the changeover. There's nothing we have to sign on this. To sign no, I just provide you copies so that each of you can see what we were planning on doing. Yep. We keep one of these. Yep. We keep one. Take the other one. The, uh, the other projects that we've been working on, uh, West and East Service Road, Water and Sewer, no updates other than the most recent news from DOT is that their award of the contract to their consultant, or the extension of the contract, will likely be another two months. So we've been put off since, I forget now, October maybe? It was late fall. Yeah. It was late fall. And and every time I talked to him, he says, call me back in a month or two. Well, I, I called him yesterday to get another update. And he said, probably beginning of May. Who's the consultant again? Their consultant is uh, Club Harbor. Okay. But they've had some issues with extending their contract. Club Harbor's contract was a study and preliminary design. Now they're ready to proceed into final design, but that's another contract that they have to execute for this next phase. And apparently the administrative process of that is pretty cumbersome because it's taken nearly six months. Yeah. Uh, we will be visiting uh, Russell's Point uh, the Village Board meeting, I believe, Thursday night, uh, John? Yep. Yeah. This Thursday night. They canceled the meeting last night. Yeah. Just for a snowstorm. So we've been almost a month getting there, too. But that's that's more in the lines of Route 11. Yeah. It's Definitely. Yeah. Just the West Service. Right. right. So those are the two open studies we have, you know, the West, West uh, East Service Road, Water Sewer, and then the Route 11 water that we're looking at, and both of them are pending village feedback and DOT feedback. So we're ready to proceed on both as soon as we you know, have that information to work with. When we discuss that with those uh, people down there, we're going to work with it with the $2.85 uh, rural water figure, and that should be acceptable, right? I mean, you said that's the kind yeah. of, that kind of the perfect two eighty five. Yeah, I mean that reviewing the old study and I you know I crunched some figures again just to make sure those numbers still work. But yeah, they've got to be under three, and the, and the further you can get it under three, the better. Well, we'll the more affordable it, it makes it. We'll try to work at, at that level, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. If they're coming back with five, six, seven dollar figures, it's no, no, it's no, we don't like yeah, that. we're out of the ball. What we'll do is we'll, get, we'll get, try to get some kind of a deal going, get a firm commitment, and some kind of a contract signed saying if we go forward with the project, this is what it's going to be, yeah. and then we can. Yeah. Another uh, area that I'd be interested in your take on is Jane was talking to me today about audits and controls work that they did, and, and one of the recommendations they made was to look at consolidating our districts. What's your take on that? Have you seen that? Consolidating Experience. districts, it's good administratively, conceptually, the challenge is these users that have no debt, these users that have a ton of debt, get put together and they've got to share that debt. That's where you can have districts not agreeable to consolidating if there's varying degrees of debt. And it'd be Are you talking debt or indebtedness? Both. So the indebtedness would stay within the district, <coughs> but the debt that the district is in due to, well, you, you can't charge for water or sewer that we've been charged from the village but can't account for it. So therefore there's a debt. Mm -hmm. But there's also indebtedness where there's bonds that have been issued. Mm -hmm. So those indebtedness districts pay for their indebtedness. So you would within the water and sewer districts you would create a debt district. If there's to keep the debt with that original user base correct. that incurred it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah you can do that. Well, I mean that's similar to what a lot of these 
villages that are considering dissolving, mm -hmm. well, the, some of them have debt, so you have to create a debt district just right. to pay that, back yeah, something. That, that infrastructure debt has to stay within Correct. that geographic area. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, the, auditor, the state auditors said they would be checking with legal counsel and getting back to us mm -hmm. on a solution to some of the problems there, so mm -hmm. we will be looking for their guidance. One good solution would be to get more sewer rates from the village. <laughs> Would you please tell me how to do that? <laughs> I've been involved in that discussion with you for seven years, and I haven't heard one one bit from the village that sounds agreeable to even negotiating that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, sure I don't know if there is a future in that discussion. Yeah. Is there anything up that we need to do for this project? No other action tonight other than the award you've already made. Yeah. Like I said, I'll, I'll proceed it and see if I can get the contractor to go ahead and put the order in on his pump. I'll fax him a copy of the notice of work just so he has that for his comfort level if he's going to you know, incur that cost of part of the pump. I like what you said about trying to encourage him to order that pump yeah. based on us, you know, passing a motion. He needed it three yeah. weeks ago, or three years ago. <laughs> well, now that we're pretty sure it's going to fly. our support on that, you know, with the contractor, I'm sure any of us would gladly talk to him. Okay. Again, he has seemed really good to work with, I mean, surprisingly good to work with, so, um, you know, real practical. I think he's a, a still fairly small contractor. He's not carrying a lot of overhead and a lot of extra costs, and obviously uh, why he was competitive in this bid. I thank you for your time. No I'll see you again, Matt. Okay. I can leave a copy of everything for, for Mickey, too, if you'd like. I assume he'll probably want it. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I need a um, motion to approve the minutes of February 8th. I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 8th. I Do I have a second? Yes, I'll take the next. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Insurance company, and then we are covered with this type of uh, fundraiser. We let somebody use our facilities. So I need a motion to approve if that is the desire of the board. I think the motion we allow to use the, our, our property for a car wash. We already checked on it, the insurance in there. So the one other thing on that, uh, I discussed this with Jane. Uh, if they're going to do that, I, they said they did it here before. They had Michigans here, so pretty reasonable. And, uh, to add on to the price that makes more money for the for the school. Yeah. Yeah. I like that if we do this, uh, I I'd be more than willing to come up and uh, cook the hot dogs and take care of the whole thing and we'll we'll get it organized up a little bit. And well, I, I will mention that to them I mean, for their benefit. Yeah, for their benefit. In, yeah, in, yeah, whatever in, we make, they can have. In conjunction with us, like okay. we did, remember we did mm -hmm. it for the okay. kind of I, yard sale. I will I mention agree. that. And we'd like uh, to have media put into this too. I mean, there's a lot of free media. The the bulletins at church, there's um, your countrymen, there's Calvin Vision, there's, you know, to make this aware that along with the car wash, there'll be Michigans for sale, and all the proceeds would go to St. Mary's Academy. Okay. I'll second that motion, by the way. Okay, thank you. Any questions on it? Do we have outside accommodations for car washing stuff? I mean, holes and that stuff? Oh, we got holes. Yeah. We're still going to have to open the garage up. Okay. Who have to be here? Well, yeah, we'll be here. You'll have to be here. We're going to need the councilman to help us set yeah. up. And, yeah. We'll be here. I'll be here in the up okay. mountain camp and uh, we'll get some hot dogs out there and things and sell them whatever we, we get. We'll time. just turn it over to, to the kids. Okay. No, I'll mention that, too, and I'm sure they'll be receptive to that. Okay, I have a motion. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, time Warner Cable. Send us a notice that we would be getting a check for. Pardon? We did. We got twenty six hundred and thirty dollars 
now it comes in, it's just a quarterly check, it's a franchise fee for uh, time order being in our area. You have your uh, pro uh, real property tax uh, service agency uh, support schedule here. They're here every Friday for questions. And they're here sometimes on Monday, uh, Mondays, they sometimes in the field working. But uh, they're here every Friday. I encourage anybody to come in that has any questions with their uh, assessments. Um, something that the auditors picked up while they were here. We need to uh, establish a work day uh, for my position. It's a part-time position. Uh, I am in the New York State Retirement System. We did this uh, the first year that I was supervisor. We need to do it every time after somebody's on election that's in the retirement system. Uh, next year we'll have to do it for the judges. They're up for election this fall. Uh, I would like a motion to approve the, the same as it was uh, before. Uh, in 2006, we, we approved that as a six-hour workday for my part-time appointment. Make a motion to that time. Second. Thank you, John. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gary, thank you. Clinton um, County Treasurer's Office sent us a check for $24,565.18 for the pilot programs that are in our area in Champlain, which is always uh, nice to receive. Checks are always nice to see. Um, got two letters. The next two letters are both pertaining to... Uh, the railroad crossing at Hayford Road, and one of them is a response from the railroad to the uh, judge, and the other one's from our attorney to us. Uh, basically is that uh, we want to continue a, a proceeding up to five years in, in order to better assess uh, the effectiveness, effectiveness of that crossing. Okay, and that to, our, to my knowledge, the only thing they have not done is provide um, the turnarounds on the west side of the tracks where we felt they were most needed for either a school bus, tractor trailer, or some big snow plow or whatever. There's not really room there to turn around. It. It's a long, long way to back up. So um, Alan and I uh, visited with the Department of Transportation guy a couple months ago, Alan, and we kind of indicated that we'd like to keep that open for a long, at least five year period. And that seems to be what they're going to do for us. I don't have anything further on that, Alan. No, I just walked with the guy that day and I told him to keep the case open because that turnaround is so narrow and it's so deep on each side. So if the tractor trailer gets lost, goes down there and panics, decides to turn around, there's no way he's going to do it. Okay. So uh, I hope that will work to our advantage. Um, we got a letter from uh, Janet Dupree pertaining to the CHIPS fund. That's the highway funds that the state pays to the towns. It will remain the same as it did last year. At $91,173, I believe it is. And that's good news. It never hasn't decreased. Okay. Um, we got a letter from uh, the county administrator pertaining to the elections of last year. They are reimbursing us $512 additional check in about $512 for the uh, the costs associated with running the 2010 election. Elections are getting very, very expensive to run. Uh, it's really unreal, but we have very little control over the cost of elections. Uh, they are trying, I say they, the, the election commissioners are trying to review uh, the cost and pertaining to how many election workers we have and how many districts there is. Uh, hopefully we keep our districts, but maybe we can uh, lower our number of workers. So, We'll know more about that later. I have a letter from the JCO that uh, uh, Mr. Carl Shank's appointment uh, is expired. He needs to be reappointed uh, as our representative on the JCO board. And JCEO. Uh, I have talked to Carl, and he's more than willing to do this. So I'd like a motion to approve him, if possible. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Carl Shank to the JCEO. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, we got a letter from the Champlain Valley National Heritage Partnership that a grant has been awarded. Uh, we were the lead agency on uh, this uh, for Celine Paulquette's uh, museum. 
There's absolutely no cost to the town whatsoever. It's, uh, uh, I'm trying to think how to, it's for, Jane, do you know what? Uh, it's for the archival, the, preserving the archivals at the, the, at the uh, history center. The history center, okay. This is strictly for your information only. There was no uh, cost. We were asked to be the lead agency, and we were, and we did, and we were successful. Okay. Uh, we have a letter here from Matt Cooper, the guy that just left us here a few minutes ago, uh, to uh, Village of Ross's Point, uh, George Rivers, the mayor, that we want to meet and discuss water rates uh, for possible district on Route 11. And we will be doing that this coming Thursday night. You have your um, dog controls report. I believe you have uh, two of them. One was in your packet, probably. One is on your desk tonight as you came in. Okay. Chazy River Memorial Post is the DFW on St. John's Road is requested that we allow them to sell poppies during the week of May 14th through the 21st of May. This is something that we've always done since I've been here. I don't know how long it's been going on. It's a very successful fundraiser for them. We, uh, they need our approval to do it. And I certainly support it. I'd like a motion to approve. I'd like to make a motion to allow the uh, them to sell poppies, to be able to sell poppies in the town. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, John. Any questions? All those in favor? All right. Opposed? Carried? You have your JCEO uh, monthly report for February, and all the activities they do. Um, something that the auditors brought up to us that uh, we should have a monthly uh, town clerk's report. And we've got one for the first time since I've been here anyways. It's very informational to see what's going on within the town, what's happening. Okay. Um, and just uh, for information only, uh, Two town board members and myself, uh, John Cooper, Steve Southwick, and uh, Mickey Petro, and now we're seeing met with uh, Betty Little. Uh, what they uh, last Friday, I believe it was. She came up to Champlain. Uh, we had a concern about the two turnabouts that were proposed by D uh, DOT at the uh, overhead passing at the Northway at uh, exit 42. Uh, we wanted her to be aware of what's going on and see what we could do to. Uh, lighten the project somehow so uh, we wouldn't affect uh, so many businesses. So uh, that's for information. Steve, you got anything to add to that? Or? Uh, no, it's just that what we'd hope to get out of this is another public hearing so we can get more people involved in what's actually going to happen with this. Mm -hmm. um, the two choices that we've pretty much been left with without much dialogue really have some limitations that I think as a board we all agree are legitimate concerns, not just for the property owner that's going to be affected, but by people in general. If they use them in a domain to buy the place, those those tax dollars are gone. That person has lost a prime spot and has just invested a ton of money into that spot and wants to keep it. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's the gist of it in my mind. John, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. Okay. I thought you would have, I felt really nice that she came up and is interested, seems to be interested in what's going on here. We give her all the information we had. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll get some good feedback. Like Steve said, we could have another public hearing. I think it would help us out. And if we do, we're going to have to get the people, people out and come out for this. Yeah. Really. No doubt about it. We're going to have to advertise and get it, you know, do a little better job than we did last time. But we didn't realize they were going to come up with such a radical change up there either. Maybe they didn't want us to know they had a thing. <laughs> Alan, you were there. I don't have any information. No, no, no. I just listened to it. I like it. Well, it, it's a concern to all of us. Uh, we don't think that 
their solution is a workable solution that's best for us, the town residents. But we'll see where that goes. We are going to work hard on that for certain. Um, any other uh, highway reports, Alan? Uh, highway committees? No. When the auditor was here last week, he recommended to me about the fuel system that we got going back there. It's kind of an honor system, but it's old and it's, it's not really the proper way of handling that fuel in there. So I met up with DNM Petroleum out of Bristol, Vermont. The guy came here. I gave you guys each a proposal. Do I have to do nothing tonight? But it's something to look at. It's going to give me a, risk, a monthly report how much fuel went in and how much fuel came out and where the fuel went. Different trucks, loaders, whatnot. And I don't know. I think it's a good idea, but it's an investment. That's what it is. I mean, sometimes you, you think the guy the guy's taking fuel, but you know, he's probably not. It's just this thing here is going to tell me accurately where the fuel is going. It's either going in a truck or it's going behind my pickup to bring in the in the field somewhere. The, you know, everything. It keeps track of each vehicle too. Each vehicle. Yeah. So. Yeah, and at the end of the year, let's say if this auditor comes up and he says, "Hey, what do you got to show me?" I can't just go throw those few sheets that I threw in one day. I mean, he kind of laughed at me a little bit, but I need mean, to have something constructive to show. Well, we've talked we've talked about this for a couple of years now. I think it's probably time to explore it uh, further. If you could uh, get this guy over here, Alan. Yeah, I'm going to try to give him a call and get him over here next week and meet with a couple of you guys. You know, if they were available. The highway uh, crew, uh, highway committee, I should say, and uh, see where it goes. Something I think we need to explore. And you mentioned there are local municipalities using this yeah. system, right? Yeah. Um, the town of Peru worked with these guys, uh, Rosses Point, the municipality has got these guys. I mean, the school up here has got them. Okay. We, we, it's something that we need to explore further for certain. Be okay. Beatman Town, too. Right? Beatman Town was that other outfit. Remember, the, 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 that other outfit was like from Rochester. Yeah, a little different, but yeah. same way, same principle. But basically the same thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. We just recently had a... Uh, risk assessment audit, I believe they call it. Uh, the state auditors came in and reviewed all our books in every department. Uh, I wish to thank the three ladies here, uh, Janice Letourneau in the court, Julie Castine, in the town clerk, and Jane, and my secretary. Um, very, very minor things, uh, mostly procedural, how to do things better maybe. Uh, was, there's no um, deficiencies or uh, Nothing was found that would put any liability upon the town in any, any form or manner. They are working on uh, a solution for us uh, for our water and sewer districts, and they're very agreeable that we need to do something. They will be back later this summer or fall, mm -hmm. and uh, they understand the situation, and uh, I think we came squeaky clean through a beautiful audit. And I do want to thank the three ladies. Uh, did a good job. And we all learn from audits, how to do things better, more efficiently, or whatever, okay? We learn from each other sometimes. I think for those three. And they interviewed Alan also. Mm -hmm. And the very, very little <coughs> things. What they need to, well, what we always refer to them as is our crutch or whatever, our helper. You know, we have problems, we call them. We're not hesitant to do so. And because of that, we don't have many problems here. Yeah. So. We, we, uh, Pays to stay out of trouble, and we have. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. It makes it easier for all of us. Um, does anybody on any of the committees have an afternoon report? Highway Building Committee, uh, um, Water and Sewer Committee, the only thing I can think of is we are exploring the possible use. Thursday night. Thursday night of a district on Route 11 coming east out of Ross's, uh, west out of Ross's Point, I should say. And uh, as you heard earlier, Matt Cooper is working on a West Service Road uh, water district. So things will move forward. They move slowly sometimes. Uh, Alan, you have nothing to say about the two feet of snow we had yesterday? <laughs> I think everybody's just disgusted and seen it. That's why I don't mention it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is there more to come? Or is... no, a little bit to come, but I don't think it's going to be as great as this one. Yeah. April is coming. We're real close. How's your sand pile holding out? Uh, it's holding, but. If we, get a, if we get another month of visits, I'm going to start scratching my head. Okay. We, got, we had a break last winter. Yeah, I remember how we said we're that. We're paying for this now. Yeah. 
Tell me first report. You got something to do? Uh, I do. <clears throat> Novatech uh, sent in their proposal here about our server. I think I talked to a couple different individuals about that. Apparently, our server is reaching its maximum because of all the information we're putting in. Um, but I talked to Steve this afternoon a little bit, and he had a good idea is to see if we could archive some of that information that's on there to see if we could make this server last another year. I, I think this $10,000 bill is a little bit much for us to handle right now in March. I don't want to jeopardize any of the information that's on there, but I think I'd like to talk to Bob or somebody else come and talk to Bob to see if there's another solution rather than to pay $10,000 for another server at this point. That's my recommendation without jeopardizing the data. It's worth looking into, and if it's not, then okay. there's going to have to bite no the bullet. That. But I'd much rather see something go into, you know, the, the fuel idea rather than this right now. Okay. I'll check with Bob, get back to us mm -hmm. on that. And one other thing, um, PERMA came in today. I think, Larry, you were trying to get the mail or something, that fellow from our... Yeah. Um, Route 3, yeah. Uh, oh, I see yes. I got back. I yeah. Think. Um, I really was. He's a representative from PERMA who handles our workers' comp um, uh, insurance policy. We're very good. We have no claims this year. I mean, nobody's been injured to any extent. But he is recommending that we continue with our safety policy, which helps us with our premium amount that we pay. And in order to do that, we have to have training tapes or safety tapes and whatnot every, every year or whatnot. The only problem is we have no VCR or DVD. <laughs> <laughs> that television works, but the VCR does not. I think I have about six of them at home. Do you? Well, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I, I don't know. The guys in their off time, I don't know how long do those tapes last? A uh, half hour? Luigi, them sessions, you get like three tapes, you got a couple hours, an hour yeah. and a half, two hours, you can see enough. They, they supply them? Yes. It, yeah. It's like a. No you cost rent to them. No, no, there's no, there's no cost to it. No. You use them and then you return them. Okay. But we don't have a, a machine to play them off of that. So okay. we're looking into yeah. something, you know, either, I don't know, you know DVD can't a, cost that much. Day of rainy day or a yeah. full day or something. Just I encourage you to do that before you get into your summer Wow, that's, that's getting yeah. close. But in order to keep our premiums down, and, yeah. and the safety of the guys, too, they yeah. should review these tapes periodically. Okay, I got no problem with that. Okay. I say just go forward with it. I don't think we need anything else. Anything else? You know, Larry, just in case if the oh. team, team doesn't come up with one of those, we should, we should purchase one. Just purchase it. They're probably 100 bucks. Would it be better now? Are you going to come in here I'll to do the tape? More room than in here than going out. Yeah, okay. Okay, so just look into getting a DVD. No, we'll just, we'll just the 55 Alive Club also uses that, the one that, you know, has the training courses. Um, and it's a hassle, but they bring their own. So I just think we should bite the bullet and buy a yes. DVD. Thank you for reminding me about this. Uh, I've been <coughs> advised by the Woodman of the World that one of ours, John Paul Petro, is going to be honored April 1st, I believe it is, on a Friday night. Yeah, April Fool's Day. I don't have the resolution in front of me. Have well, I might need to read it at the yeah. but we'll just I have a resolution made up and it's framed uh, for John. I would just like, like a motion to approve that. Uh, Resolution to uh, show John our appreciation for his service to the town. Uh, I, I would really, really like to make that motion. I will be taking that myself. Uh, well, we should first. all do it together. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're all going to make that motion. motion for that. Okay. Okay. I'll second it. I'll second, I'll second, I'll second it. And all, all in favor. All in favor. Yeah. 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 Well yeah. deserved, John. I will yes. see you well on uh, April Fool's Day, John. Yeah. Best part about it is I got to cook my own meal. That's a dollar. What are you having? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have two two two, two uh, not two meat one meat one stuffed chicken breast. Yeah. And the other one's gonna be it's on Friday. See, during Lent. During Lent. So I gotta cook some fish too. What kind of fish? I'm Perch? gonna cook cod fish. Cod. No, okay. haddock. Oh, oh, haddock. Oh, haddock. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, congratulations, John. Yes. There we are. We are proud to have one of ours honored. <laughs> By the women of the world, for certain. Okay, anybody, I got the bills to pay, but anything for the bills? 
Anything else from the Board? Okay, if not, you have your Posada bills, and I need a motion to approve the Muckley bills. We got one to go. One to read. Yeah, okay. it's for uh, Northern Sanitation. There's a check that was sent out last uh, last month. For some reason, they didn't get it. We had to stop payment, so it's last month and this month for the total of five hundred fifteen dollars and ninety eight ninety six cents to be added. Okay. Need a motion to approve the bills. I make a motion to approve the bills. I need a second. Thank you, John. Any questions? Any of the bills? I had one, and I probably shouldn't say anything, but I've got it anyway. How it. come there's a difference between the charges for the Hilton in New York for uh, some than others? Yeah. Very, very logical explanation. Okay. <laughs> some of us brought our wives. No. Well, no. one extra night. So oh. Somebody said an extra night. They, those people that did that need to reimburse us for their extra night. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks for another question. I didn't see anything on that. Uh, we just got the bill. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's in there. With, uh, some of us went down on the train, we had to stay an extra night. Oh. Yeah. They chose to do that on their own. They chose to stay the extra night. That great ride, too, boy. Uh, I'm serious. That is nice, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. I would recommend that. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It was really great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Any other questions on that? No. No. Okay. It beats that bus trip hands down, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have no question. Yeah. Any other questions on the bills? If not, I need a motion to approve. I have that. Yes. I have that. Yes. Yes. I have that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Anybody else have anything we bring before the board before I proceed to close? If not, I need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Judy. 30-28, two-point game with eight minutes to go. Travel. Miller will inbound it. It's it into Babby. Up loose by Marnes. Rabideau to inbound it. Just in case it wasn't... On the tape, yeah! picking up the loose ball there was uh, Kayla Knapper. We are tied 30-30. Marnes, no, that's not Marnes. That's, that's uh, Fabro. Is the Miss Chiefs ahead, 32-30. Case is not present on the early part of the tape. I want to thank Rainey and Marcella Rabidou for renewing their viewer support prior to the start of the ball game. Nice shot there by Skyler Hebert.